Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. In the previous video we went through the assembly of the official Raspberry Pi 7 inch LCD display, uh, close up views of how to assemble all the various parts and adding the Raspberry Pi onto the back of the display. In this video we're going to go through testing the display using Raspbian version 1.5.0. Uh, if you're watching this later on and there's a later version, the testing still should probably be applicable. If not, I'll make another video. But anyway, this video will take you through how to um, verify that the display is working. It's not a performance test and we're not going to test a whole bunch of Raspbian features on it. We're just going to verify that the LCD display is correctly working and that the touch panel works as well and simply install a virtual keyboard for testing. My assumption here is that you've already created an SD boot disk and have installed Raspbian and verified that everything is working on a standard uh, HDMI screen or something like that before we proceed. So what I'm going to use here is I'm using the Raspberry Pi official Wi-Fi module, the 32 gig SanDisk SD card that we created using the Noobs and Raspbian 1.5.0 uh, installation. We've got a Logitech mouse, Logitech mouse with a uh, 2.4 gigahertz wireless adapter for it. And we have a wired Apple keyboard, which is just a standard USB connected keyboard. That's what we're going to hook up. And the other piece that we're using here is a 2 amp 5 volt power adapter. This one happens to be from RS, but you can get it from wherever you like. And the one nice thing about this is, as you can see here, it doesn't have a USB connection on it. It's hardwired with a thick two core cable. And on the other end is directly wired a micro USB connector. Okay. So this is going to give us the lowest amount of drop on the cable. I don't know if it says the gauge on here. Let me just have a little look. So that's nice and thick. And so we shouldn't have any problems. And it's a five volt, two amp power brick. Obviously, because we're driving the LCD display as well, we're going to be taking a little bit more current than normal. So let's get these pieces plugged in. This is the back of the module. We're just going to plug in the SD card in the back and just click it into place. We're going to put the um, Wi-Fi module in the mouse adapter and the USB keyboard. Now the last thing we're going to do is obviously plug in the power into that connector. And we're pretty much ready to boot up. So all I'm doing is powering it up now with the LCD display connected so that you can see how this goes. That's it plugged in. And you can see there immediately I plugged it in. Let me just turn it off again. And now I'm going to power it up and let it continue to power up. Now the first thing to notice is as soon as it starts booting, you'll see the display will flash white and then it will show up the rainbow and then it will continue the boot process. There's the white, there's the rainbow. And just give it a second while it starts booting off the SD card and figures things out. It's gone clear. Now it's booting. Now the one thing that a lot of people have mentioned is that this thing comes up upside down and that's exactly what's happening right here. You can see it's powering up and the whole display is upside down, even though this way is a little easier to uh, stand the display up with the, you know, with the power connection coming off at the top. So it's upside down. So let's just turn this around. Okay, so that's the display. It's, and as I say, I haven't done anything to get this up and working. And I think you'll see, see how I'm just touching this in different places? It's actually the touch screen is already working. So if I double click on the waste basket, that's opened it right up and available. And if I hit the X in the corner, it goes away. One thing you can clearly see here is that um, there was no effort whatsoever, aside from the physical plugging in of everything, um, there was no requirement to configure anything for this version of Raspbian, the latest one, to get the LCD seven inch display working on it whatsoever, touch screen, uh, display the whole works it's all working just fine so in order to install a keyboard on this for a, like a virtual keyboard we need to um, run uh, and install the matchbox keyboard so what we're going to do is run sudo apt get install matchbox keyboard and see what happens Okay, so now that we've got the LCD installed, we've got still got the basic installation of Raspbian and I did another one just to test out something for one of my viewers to do with connecting to wireless networks. 
Um, I just need to connect this to my local network before we have any internet access. So just give me a second while I put in the key. Okay, so now we have Wi-Fi running. Now we can do the um, various fixes that we need to do. The first thing we want to do is a uh, sudo update and then a sudo upgrade. So sudo app get update, sudo app get upgrade. So we'll do that first. Okay, so sudo apt get update. When you're doing this, of course, you need to make sure that you've got internet access. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to work. Now, I'm doing this over the Wi-Fi. I do not have wired uh, connections at the moment. So this is just verifying to you that the standard Wi-Fi dongle does indeed work quite happily. So we just, I'll come back as soon as this is done. Okay, so that took less than 60 seconds. Now we're going to run the sudo apt get upgrade so that we upgrade any drivers that might need doing. So let's run that now. There may not be anything to do because it is a new image. Yep, there's a little bit, so we'll say yes. And I'll come back to you again when this is all done. Okay, so it took about five minutes to run, uh, maybe less than that, and it's all done. So the next thing is to do a reboot so that any of these things get taken into effect. Then we will install the keyboard virtual driver. So it's simply sudo space reboot. So a quick reboot. Okay, now we're just going to run the update for the Matchbox keyboard. Sorry, the install for the Matchbox keyboard. So the command line for that is sudo apt-get install matchbox-keyboard. So we say enter. We say yes, we want to do it. And that's it done. So from what I can see, you just type Matchbox keyboard. And at least it's installed here, so we have one. I should be able to move this around, as you can see. Um, and that's just running it from here. And as you can see, it's type as a typing on the keyboard. It is putting the characters down the bottom here. So we'll just press return. Now, obviously, this is not running in the same session. I don't know if it will. This session is running the keyboard. It's not running. Um, let's just start another terminal and see if this keyboard will actually type into this terminal, which it does. So if we just do um, something like LS, it's a little bit small for my fingers, that's for sure. Yes, so ls, enter, and there we go. So that's virtual keyboard installed and running. Um, might take a reboot before it actually shows up as a um, keyboard menu. So let's just reboot this and unplug the existing keyboard and see if that uh, picks it up in the menu. So under accessories, it should have shown up, and there it is, keyboard. So you can just start it from there as well. So you can do it from the command line with matchbox-keyboard, or you can do it with the mouse where you just go along and click it. Or of course, uh, even without the mouse, if you're running a full touch, I'll just close it there, you can actually um, go accessories keyboard and start it up too. And from here, if I want to be typing into um, this screen, then I can just, you know, as long as it's been selected, I can, come in here 
and I got chunky fingers, but and I'm typing it from the side because the camera's in the way. But as you can see there, quite happily typing away on the keyboard. So as far as installing the 7-inch LCD display and getting a virtual keyboard up and running, we seem to have completed that. So I'm going to call that done for this particular video. I don't want to make it too long. The primary thing was to show you how to actually uh, wire up the LCD screen and verify that it's working. And so I've taken the simplest pass path possible to show you that. And I think that um, you'll see that it has been made very, very simple by the Raspberry Pi guys. Um, there may be other virtual keyboard applications and things available. And I mean, the kind of things I'm used to with using tablets, etc., is where I would do something like what I'm just going to show you here. Um, you know, if I was running completely touch, like with a tablet, I would touch on the terminal, and then the minute I touch in here to do some typing, I would expect a virtual keyboard to pop up somewhere. And I don't know yet how to do that, and if any of you do, then please post it in the comments or post a link to where it describes it, and I'll definitely share it with everybody else. Um, but for the meantime, as you can see, we've got the LCD up and running, so that's it. If you like the video, you find it useful, uh, and I think especially the real close-up shots of how you actually plug in the connectors, I think, are the most useful part of this video, in my opinion. Uh, then anyway, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, then don't. But um, either way, I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, and I will see you again soon. The next video is probably going to be installing Windows 10 IoT on the Raspberry Pi with the latest version of that because Microsoft has brought out some uh, new version with enhanced capabilities. So we'll have a look at that. And we'll also have a look at running the LCD screen, this one that we're looking at right now on Windows 10 as well. And I'll make that probably into one video too. So anyway, that's it. So goodbye and see you again soon.